My name is Lynn Evola Smith. I'm the founder of the Peace Angels Project and the founder of the Art of Peace Charitable Trust. We melt down weapons in different parts of the world and we create the Peace Angel Monuments to provoke change. It's a real um, pleasure and honor to represent the work that is in process in watching uh, young people give up weapons, governments, law enforcement, to make a symbol that would provoke and, and prod people to remember their greatness. The Peace Angels, as one is here with me right here now, is a, um, a group of sculptures made of decommissioned nuclear missile casings and street weapons. Depending on where in the world these Peace Angels will be sighted, the indigenous weapons that are used have a great deal of meaning to the people who come from that region. In our country, in the United States of America, nuclear missile casings will be used as the foundation of all the peace angels. Guns from our streets that kill our children every day will be mixed with these nuclear casings. And in some regions up in the Bay Area and San Francisco, we'll be using needles from the drug deluge that has claimed the lives of our families and friends. In Bosnia, what was offered for the Peace Angel for Sarajevo, for the Museum of Contemporary Art, were landmines to go along with the guns, the secondary plague after the terrible war there. In Jerusalem, AK-47s, rockets, all will be mixed in with the nuclear casings from our world. It's a very important time in our history. We have enough intelligence globally, intercommunication, to know that this epidemic of violence is something that is all over the world. It knows no sex or race or religion. It's everywhere. It's a consciousness shift. 800,000 weapons are destroyed every year. Eight million are produced. That begs the notion that perhaps it's time to shift the way we think in our world. Now, I am not um, a kind of peacemaker that feels that at this time we cannot be protected. Unfortunately, we live in a world where there needs to be distance between the people who would not harm and the people who would. I have great respect for our law enforcement. I have great respect for our veterans. Um, my father was in World War II in Guadalcanal for four years. His mother didn't even know he was alive during that time. These kinds of stories of war and peace are as old as humanity. And I think it's really a time and a moment that there is an attention on this issue from several different angles. That perhaps we need to look as a species on the possibility of putting more emphasis on the peace side so that human beings will continue to exist. So the peace angels garner attention. Physically, depending on their size, we can melt down six to ten weapons as this one-foot peace angel, a hundred thousand weapons for the monument for downtown Los Angeles or for lower Manhattan or for the 150-foot sculptures that are being asked for a West Coast Statue of Liberty in San Pedro, or for the monuments near the Ukraine, where NATO has melted down 800,000 weapons. These peace angels can absorb 
a great deal of those weapons and stand there in perpetuity for humankind to remember our greatness and remember what we have within us to make a better world. That's what these peace angels are all about. That's what they stand for. I created this peace angel in 1997 with weapons from the LA Sheriff's Department. And the very first weapons um, melted came from Sheriff Block. They also came from peace missiles, which gave us nuclear casings. Sh uh, President Clinton received the very first one while he was in office. Then came 2001. Living here in New York area, my husband and I brought the Renaissance Peace Angel from California and put it in front of Nino's restaurant where they fed the firemen, police officers, and rescue workers 24-7. So 24-7 means thousands of people fed every week, 24 hours a day, seven days a week without stop. And the peace angel stood there as a beacon of peace when no one wanted to hear that word. Having lost my husband, it begs the notion that peace is sometimes very difficult. But that is why it is such an important issue. I don't personally believe that war is the opposite of peace. I think that war is the opposite of creativity. But the moment that you have peace at the center, the possibility can go either way. That's the responsibility that I think human beings need to remember is that peace is a pause, it's a moment, it's a silence. That's why younger generations have oftentimes had difficulty with the notion of peace. It's hard to define. What does that mean? Peace is um, inaction, it's boring. But the point is, it's the keystone. It's the venue that once you walk through it, there's the potential and possibility for creation to build a civilization, to build a family, an education, to build a life. That's what's robbed of young people when they choose conflict and they choose war. Destruction cannot exist on the same plane as a peace angel because a peace angel stands at that keystone, the holding of peace, the holding of possibility. When we create a peace angel, it takes a lot of weapons, as noted. A 32-foot peace angel monument is 100,000 weapons. This last year saw Sheriff Baca and Chief Beck stand, take a stand in Los Angeles and give the Art of Peace Charitable Trust 9,800 weapons within a year. These weapons are be, have been destroyed by SA Recycling and will be held to create the California Peace Angels. On June 7th this last year, Commissioner Kelly gave us 1,000 weapons for the creation of the first of the series of the New York Peace Angel. These two events are historic. They have not occurred before. And from now on, they have taken a stand to destroy the weapons and using that metal contributes to the manifestation of peace and a peace symbol.